Hello, and welcome back to Combat Air Patrol 2. This time we're on build 806, and I thought I'd actually talk to you all a bit about some of the changes and how they've come about. So, if you're going to make a Harrier game or simulation, you could argue that the most important thing to get right is V-Stall Flight. It is, after all, the one thing that makes the Harrier stand out compared to other fixed-wing aircraft. Well, unless someone wanted to make a Yak-38 Forger simulation, though probably the most important thing to simulate with the Forger is having to remove any payload before even being able to take off. With that in mind, and also considering that most people with a flight stick or even some HOTAS setups don't have an access that can be dedicated to the nozzle lever, a digital implementation was always going to be required. This was done by buttons which could move the nozzles in increments of 10 degrees, as well as two shortcuts for the hover stop and full braking stop. Though these had been incorrectly set to 90 degrees and 110 degrees respectively. But 10 degrees is quite abrupt for fine adjustments when hovering, in particular when trying to land on a ship. If you're in a nice hover and move the nozzles 10 degrees in either direction, you've lost quite a bit of jet lift which could lead to a bit of a drop. So at the beginning of July, I started a topic on the Steam forums for the game talking about ways to improve this. Firstly, to readjust the maximum nozzle angle to the correct 98.5 degrees. Then, to change the nozzle increments from 10 degrees to 5 degrees, which would allow more control in the hover. The downside with this, of course, is that more button presses are required to reach any given nozzle angle. Now that's not really a problem during approach or landing, where you'll be taking your time, but it is a problem during a short takeoff. For a short takeoff in the Harrier, also known as a rolling vertical takeoff, the aircraft accelerates with the nozzles pointing rearwards to maximise acceleration and then, at a designated speed or when leaving the carrier deck, they are rotated downwards to anywhere between 40 and 60 degrees to launch the aircraft upwards into the air, where it can continue to accelerate by slowly moving the nozzles fully aft. To make selecting the exact nozzle angle easier, the real Harrier has an adjustable short takeoff stop. Splicey splicey this clip from my VHS archive which is also on YouTube. The short takeoff stop is a spring loaded knob. It's moved into position and then all the pilot has to do is pull the nozzle lever back to this stop and he has selected the exact nozzle angle he wants very quickly, reliably and without having to look down into the cockpit. I suggested putting a similar feature into the game where the player could select a certain nozzle angle, press and hold a button to set this as a stop and then tapping the same button would move the nozzles to this pre-selected position. Another poster, Kyle, also suggested putting in a nozzle angle of 82 degrees, which is the correct hover stop position, which I really should have thought of myself. The devs agreed, and so here we are in the game, and, as you can see, between 0 and 70 degrees, we still have 10 degree increments. However, we then have 75, 80, 82, 85, 90, 95, and 98.5 degree settings. The nozzle stop has also been implemented. I'll move the nozzles here to 50 degrees, press and hold my nozzle stop button, which I've put on the right stick, and there we go. If I move the nozzles back to 10 degrees, then press the right stick, as you can see in the bottom right, we've instantly selected 50 degrees. Okay then, let's do a short flight using these new features. A little look at some other important things that have been implemented recently. A rolling vertical landing on the airfield as a touch and go. Then we'll go and do a vertical landing back on the carrier. And we'll talk about a few more Harrier quirks while we're at it.
So one of the things that we mentioned is that the hover stop position on the Harrier is in fact 82 degrees and not 90 degrees, the way most people would probably think. The reason for this is because of the Harrier's landing gear arrangement. On the ground, the Harrier sits with about 6 to 8 degrees nose up. As you can see right here, we're flying straight and level, 0 degrees pitch. But if you look at the landing gear, we can see that the nose gear extends far below the main gear, and this gives us the problem. Like any aircraft, even in the Harrier, you do want to land with the main gear first. Bad things can happen if you land with the nose gear first. Splicey splicey. So because of this, the Harrier hovers and lands with about 8 degrees nose up. Hence the reason why the hover stop position is 82 degrees of nozzle. 90 degrees minus 8 degrees. So basically, even though the nozzles are at 82 degrees, they are actually pointing straight down towards the ground. This image basically demonstrates the nozzle angle in relation to the aircraft's attitude. If you were to take off or land with 90 degrees of nozzle and the nose lifted up appropriately, you would in fact be flying backwards. And there we go. The main point for showing this video is to demonstrate that the developers are watching, listening and implementing ideas suggested by people playing the early access game, which is of course the idea of early access in the first place. When I did my original live stream, we had some concerns about just how much stuff would be listened to and how much the game would improve. Having watched this, hopefully you can feel a bit more reassured that things are in fact moving forwards. That said, I'm still hoping for my hood only view just to make landing on the ship a little bit easier for people like me that don't have either head tracking software or a virtual reality headset.